Welcome to Order Militaris Radio TV and our live phone Catholics and what we do is all for free. And we and for our love of Jesus Christ and for Holy Mother, the church and we'll defend our Holy Mother, the church. Today we're doing our special Memorial Day episode outside of the Allied Cemetery. With Brother Alexis Bonolo. Thank you, AJ, for having me on Order Militaris Radio TV. Uh, broadcasting here live from uh, the Sicilian, um, Sicily American uh, Military Cemetery at Anzio, famous uh, amphibious invasion here in Italy. And um, many of you know about World War II, but some of you only may have heard of Anzio. You don't know anything about it. So I'll ask AJ to do a little summary of how the American forces came here to Anzio and what the Battle of Anzio was about why it was so important before we talk about the cemetery. Yeah, so Anzio was the battle of the Italian campaign of World War II that took place from January 22nd, 1944. And it went on to January 5th, 1944, ending with the capture of Rome. Um, the operation was opposed by the German forces in the area of Anzio and uh, net, net uno. The operation was initially commanded by Major General John P. Lucas of the Army's commanding U.S. 6th Corps intent to outflank German forces after Winterline naval an attack on Rome. The success of the amphibious landing at the location in a basin consisting sub substantially on reclaimed marshland and surrounded by mountains depended on the element of surprise and swiftness with the invaders could build up strength and move inland re relative at to the re reaction time and strength of the defenders. Any delay could result in occupation of the mountains by the defenders and consequent entrapment of the invaders. Lieutenant General Mark W. Clark, commander of the 5th U.S. Army, understood that risk but did not pass on his appreciation of the situation to his subordinate Lucas, who prefer preferred to take his time to entrench against the expected counterattack. Initial landing achieved complete surprise with no opposition. An Egypt patrol even made it as far as the outskirts of Rome. However, Lucas, who had little confidence in the operation of his plan, failed to cap capitalize on the element of surprise and delayed his advance until he judged his position was sufficiently consolidated and he had sufficient strength. So while he was um, taking his time, Field Marshal Albert Kissinger at Kiering, a German commander of the Italian theater, moved every unit he could spare to make a ring around the beachhead. His artillery units had clear view of the Allied positions, and they also stopped the drainage pumps and flooded the reclaimed marsh with salt water, planning to entrap and destroy them by an epidemic. For weeks, he ra rained shells on the beach, in the marsh, in the harbor, and anything else observable from the hills, with little distinction between forward and rear positions. After a month of heavy but inconclusive fighting, Lucas was relieved and sent home. His replacement was Major General Lucian Tr Trusco, who had previously commanded the 3rd U.S. Infantry Division. Finally, the Allies broke out in May, but instead of striking inland to cut the lines of communication in, in the, of the 10 German Army units fighting at Monte Cassino, Trusco and Clark's, Clark's orders reluctantly turned his forces northwest towards Rome, which was captured on June 4th, 1944. And uh, it was still a bloody mess after that, thanks to those two incompetent generals. Now, there was a famous American general who was supposed to be assigned to this invasion, but Eisenhower removed him to spite him. And who was that? And uh... yeah, so that was General Patton. And I'm reading from this diary entry on February 16th. At 1.30 a.m., 
Kaldman had telephone had a telephone call from Butcher for me to report to General Eisenhower at once. We started at uh, 6 a.m. in the pitch dark and arrived at 20 Grover Square at 10.45 in the morning. When I went in, Ike said, I am afraid you will have to eat crow again for a little while. I said, what have I done now? He replied, you may, you may have to take command of the beachhead in Italy and st straighten things out. I replied, this was not eating crow, but a great compliment, as I would be willing to command anything from a platoon up in, in order to fight. He then gave me a radiogram from Alexander. Alexander sent, sent it to Brooke, chief of the Imperial General Staff, Marshall's counterpart, who forwarded it immediately to Eisenhower, waking him up at, the, at midnight, February 15th. Lucas and his uh, sixth court headquarters in Anzio Beachhead, Alexander said, were negative and lacked the necessary drive and enthusiasm to get things done. They appeared to have become depressed by events. He was about to meet with Wilson, De Devers, and Clark to see what could be done. What we need, Alexander said, is a thrust like General Patton. That had pr prompted Eisenhower's telephone calls. Alexander said that the British had sustained most of the losses. I doubt this. And if you cannot send me a thruster like George Patton, I recommend putting a British officer in command. I've already sent a British Major General to the headquarters of the Sixth Corps to spur them on a little. Ike said he would never consent to letting the British have command, but he would loan me for a month as the only fighting general in the army. He also made certain remarks about Devers and wonders why the hell he hadn't got into the fight, saying, as he was doing nothing anyways. Ike sent me a telegram offering to let me go. They will consider it in reply. In the meantime, one G-54 and one B-25 are waiting at the airport in London, warmed up, ready to take me to Italy. And I have a telephone for uh, Stiller and Sergeant Meeks and my fighting equipment. And I told I told Ike that I was anxious to go, but I must be backed up by him as otherwise I would have, have my coat, my throat cut. He said he would back me up and would report the whole thing to General, General Marshall by special messenger. I suppose I'm the only person in the world who would be elated at the chance to commit personal and official suicide, but I'm tickled to death and will make a go of it. Then on the next day, they got another notice and saying, Hold your horses, you can't go. He's like, okay, let me recommend the guy. So he recommends uh, Lu Lucas uh, Truscott from the 3rd Division to take over. And then he reports to meet, uh, General Clark. And that's how, we, how they decided not to go and cut off the 10th Army and just take Rome instead. Yeah, so this was one of the first uh, uh, really horrible decisions made politically. Uh, some say Eisenhower didn't want the star of Patton to shine after he took Messina before the British, who Montgomery did in the Sicilian campaign, and after his victories in North Africa, uh, because he was thinking of running for president and thought Patton might be a rival. Uh, thousands of Americans and British died because of that decision of Eisenhower. And um, we'll see this again in uh, the Normandy beaches. And that invasion, which is heralded in the American press as a, as a great victory, D-Day, was an absolute flop. They couldn't do anything. The Germans completely surrounded them. For the first uh, two months, they made no advance, not until Patton was put in command. And uh, <clears throat> there we can say tens of thousands were killed because of... Um, this political prejudice towards George Patton, and we shouldn't hide this as American citizens. So, where are we? Where is Anzio? So, if you look at Italy, and you know where Rome is, it's just south of Rome. There's a little bump on the coast. Uh, Anzio is a beach coast town, and there's a little hamlet. Back then, there was a little hamlet outside of town called Netuno, and that's where the actual cemetery is. 
Uh, unfortunately, we are not allowed to film in the American cemetery. This is under control of the American government, granted by the Italian government in perpetuity. But the current administration will not allow even American citizens to make a video because they say it's a threat to security, or I guess some something. And if we did make a video from the inside, our video would be pulled from the net. Uh, they put takedown orders, I guess. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this shows you the absurdity of the current administration. And uh, what more to say than that? It's a beautiful cemetery. And you can see little bits of it here. I'll try to turn it. Uh, I think there's about, uh, what, do you know the exact number of men buried here, AJ? And maybe you could read something about the history of the cemetery while I pan. Yeah, so. Uh, so yeah, let me get to that. So, um, got it. So the, his, the cemetery was established in Netuno as a temporary battlefield cemetery on 20, on 24th January 1942, uh, 1944. Two days after Operation Shingle began, Allied landings at Anzio and Natino on mainland Italy. The majority of the burials of the cemetery are men that died fighting in the liberation of Sicily, codenamed Operation Husky, and the landings at Salerno, codenamed Operation Avalanche, and the heavy fighting northward and landings, codenamed Operation Shingo. At the Anzio and Notio expansion of the beachhead, an air and naval support in the region. So total burials are 7,858. And notable burials are Medal of Honor recipient Sylvester Antelok, born 1916, died 1944 for the action at Anzio Beachhead. Robert T. Waugh, uh, born 1919, died 1944 for the action at Gusto Line in Lazio, Italy. Then Max Brand, born 1892, died 1944, was cor was war res correspondent and author, killed at Lazio, Italy. So e for each um, death, each tomb, there is a white, beautiful white marble cross, uh, unless the person. Uh, was Jewish, I think then there's like a Star of David. And uh, these are not all the men who were buried here because following the war, I think under the Eisenhower administration, secret administration, uh, there was some assistance offered for families who wanted their loved one back. And many paid the, ex the, the expense to have their loved one brought back to the United States. So these are <clears throat> the men and women whose family were either too poor or there was no one to remember them. And it's a shame that this, this cemetery, which is one of the largest in Europe for American servicemen and women, being so close to Rome, is almost never visited by Americans. I came here for the first time in, 20, in the spring of um, 2012. And the custodian then told me that no Catholic priest had ever said mass here in 20 years for the dead. No group of seminarians had ever visited. And it was very rare at all that even Americans, tourists who were visiting Italy came here. Really sad, very sad. Um, Anzio is no less important than uh, Nor the Normandy beaches because uh, Italy had to be taken out of the war first. Otherwise, there would have been a, me a menace to the entire Mediterranean area. And uh, the British and Americans couldn't have freed up air power and naval power for the invasion. Of so it's a very significant battle. And it was because of this battle that the Italian peninsula eventually was liberated. And um, for us Catholics, uh, 
Catholic Italy being liberated is something we should celebrate. We just did a we just did a video at Auto Militas Radio TV about um, MacArthur's liberation of the Catholic Philippines. So this is uh, deeply so, and uh, there's a beautiful marble house and altar above uh, at, at the end of the colonnade. You can see it on, uh, uh, AJ can put a link to the cemetery on the show page. And um, the altar is so high, you can only say a Tridentine Mass on it. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, so uh, it's a beautiful place. There's public parking nearby. And you're right near the beaches. And this is, we're having a beautiful weather today. But it's also a very solemn, um, uh, solemn um, act to come here and remember what our American servicemen did for the liberty of Italy, for the liberty of the Catholic Church, the liberty of the Holy Father. Uh, in liberating Rome, they, they liberated Pius XII. So all you Catholics out there, you tradies who like Pius XII, you should be coming here and saying the Trinity Mass for the, these dead. Many of them are Catholic. If you read the names, there's a lot of Polish names, a lot of Irish names here, Irish Americans, Polish Americans here. And uh, up the road, there's the British Cemetery, and then there's the German Cemetery. Italians did not fight to defend the beaches here because Italy had already surrendered to the Allies. And so um, uh, very, very few Italians were involved in military operations. They, they didn't want anything to do with the Germans at that point. Um, so you asked me to find a Catholic prayer for Memorial Day. I found one, so let me read it. All powerful God, we honor today those men and women, our sons and daughters, husbands and wives, fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers. We have laid down their life for their country, whether weary or emboldened, quiet or defiant, or vulnerable or ready when you called them home. Their sacrifice is too humbling for words, except these uttered in prayer. Loving Lord, bless them forever in your eternal peace. Cherish their spirit, honor their commitment, send them our love, and we'll never forget the service that they gave. Amen. I think I can walk temporarily in front of the main entrance. We can't, I can't post the camera there, but at least to give you all a view of what the central aisle looks like for the cemetery. Perhaps you can see way in the back the, uh, the stone structure where the altar is. It's inside mm -hmm. the top of the house, and you can see the 7,000 men buried on each side. And it's a very well cared for cemetery. I would say it's just as well cared for as Arlington, but I haven't been to Arlington. It's probably a bit better because the, in the Italian sun, the grass grows better here than it does in Virginia. And uh, if you ever come to Rome, Italy on a vacation, please make a point to remember the men and come and visit. You, there's a train, you can actually take the train from Rome here to Anzio, and uh, I think it's 10, 15 bucks, and it's an hour, hour, hour uh, trip. And uh, well, if you're gonna go to the beach anyhow, you might as well first stop and visit the American cemetery here. Or if you're British, the Brit British cemetery. And um, it's really an honor to visit. And this is the first time it's open to the public since uh, the pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, we had wanted to do a program here and weren't able. And um, if you know anyone in the War Memorials Commission, American Military Cem Cemetery Commission, this would be a time to write them a letter. AJ will, will research who you write and, uh, and say, this is utterly ridiculous that American citizens who make the pilgrimage, you might say, 
to come all the way here from the United States cannot make a video that share with anyone. So uh, that's just, you know, ridiculous. We were going to, I was going to take the camera and walk among the tombstones so you could see some of the names of the hundreds of men here. And I was going to go into the marble house at the end of, at the other end of the cemetery, which lists the names of all the missing in action, whose bodies were never found. And, um, and to show all those men whose remains were found, but were not identified. It's really touching. It's really moving. The uh, American ambassador came here on Saturday to do a formal cer cer ceremony. Why he didn't come today is... There's another thing you can put in your, your letter, because um, uh, this is a show about the, the dead. Uh, remember their sacrifice in a just war. U.S.'s participation in the Second World War was a just war. So these men, uh, these men, God willing, are enjoying eternal glory for their sacrifice. But um, this is not being run correctly, you know. I, in my opinion, it's not being run correctly, and uh, maybe we'll do a program on the Catholic Party of America about how the cemeteries should be taken for, and a little respect for the Americans who do come here. I can see now why so few visitors do come. Can't make a video. Can you imagine how many people, Americans, would come here and make a video on their cell phone? I only knew because I asked, and then have it taken down when they're sharing it on Facebook, you know. It, it's ridiculous. So, thank you, AJ, for uh, organizing this Memorial Day program from the American Cemetery at Anzio, actually at Natuno. It's called the Sicily American, because here are buried not only those who fell at Anzio, but all the Allied dead from North Africa, Sicily, and Southern Italy, and all um, the uh, American dead who were shot out of the air fighting over Southern Europe. And uh, that's why many names of the missing whose bodies have never been found are airmen from the Air Corps. Uh, so it's um, a beautiful place to come and say a prayer. Bring your rosary and say a rosary. And if you're a priest, contact their thing. And maybe they can give permission to say masses. Because as I said, as far as I know, no American clergy have come here in at least one year, which is a disgrace. So this is the Lord of Military Studio TV sending off Gas Vault. Gas Vault.